Part One of Alcestis by Euripides, translated by Gilbert Murray. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Characters of the play: Admetus, King of Fury, in Thessaly, read by Todd. Alcestis, daughter of Pelas, his wife, read by Elizabeth Clett. Pheres, his father, formerly king, but now in retirement. Read by Bruce Peary. Two children, his son and daughter. Read by Lynn Silva. A manservant in his house. Read by Lambda. A handmaid. Read by Ariel Lipshaw. The hero, Heracles. Read by M.B. The god, Apollo. Read by Libby Gone. Thanatos, or Death. Read by Dustin Tuttle. Chorus consisting of elders of fury read by capricia page read by elizabeth clatt narration read by david lawrence the scene represents the ancient castle of almetus near fury in thessaly it is the dusk before dawn apollo radiant in the darkness looks at the castle admetus house Twas here I bowed my head of old, and chafed not at the bondman's bread, though born in heaven. I, Zeus to death, had hurled my son Asclepius, healer of the world, piercing with fire his heart, and in mine ire I slew his cyclop churls who forged the fire, whereat Zeus cast me forth to bear the yoke of service to a mortal. To this folk I came, and watched a stranger's herd for pay, and all his house I have prospered to this day. For innocent was the lord I chanced upon, and clean as my own heart, King Fairy's son, Admetus. Him I rescued from the grave, beguiling the grey sisters till they gave a great oath that Admetus should go free, would he but pay to them below in fee another living soul. Long did he prove all that were his, and all that owed him love, but— Never a soul he found would yield up life and leave the sunlight for him, save his wife, who even now down the long galleries is borne, death wounded, for this day it is she needs must pass out of the light and die, and seeing the stain of death must not come nigh my radiance, I must leave this house I love. But ha, the headsman of the pit, above earth's floor to ravish her, I long and late he hath watched, and cometh at the fall of fate. Enter from the other side Thanatos, a crouching black-haired and winged figure, carrying a drawn sword. He starts in revulsion on seeing Apollo. Aha! Why here? What makest thou at the gate, thou thing of light? Wilt o'er tread the eternal judgment and abate and spoil the portions of the dead? "'Tis not enough for thee to have blocked in other days Admetus's doom, "'with craft of magic wine which mocked the three grey sisters of the tomb. "'But now once more I see thee stand at watch and shake "'that arrow-armed hand to make this woman thine who swore, "'who swore to die now for her husband's sake. "'Fear not. I bring fair words and seek but what is just. "'And if words help thee not, an arrow must?' "'Tis ever my delight to bear this bow. "'And aid this house unjustly. I, tis so. "'I love this man and grieve for his dismay. "'And now wilt rob me of my second prey. "'I never robbed thee, neither then nor now. "'Why is Admetus here, then, not below? "'He gave for ransom his own wife, for whom? "'I am come, and straight will bear her to the tomb. "'Go, take her. I can never move thine heart. "'To slay the doomed?' nay i will do my part no to keep death for them that linger late twould please thee so i owe thee homage great ah then she may yet she may yet grow old no i too have my rights and them i hold tis but one life thou gainest eitherwise when young souls die the richer is my prize old with great riches they will bury her fie on thee fie thou rich man's lawgiver how is there wit in death who seemed so blind the rich would buy long life for all their kind 
Thou wilt not grant me then this boon? Tis so? Thou knowest me. What am I? I tell thee, no. I know God sickeneth thee, and men pine. Be gone. Too many things not meant for thine, thy greed hath conquered. But not all, not all. I swear, for all thy bitter pride, a fall awaits thee. One even now comes conquering towards this house, sent by a Southland king to fetch him four wild coursers of the race which rend men's bodies in the winds of Thrace. This house shall give him welcome good, and he shall wrest this woman from thy worms and thee. So, thou shalt give me all, and thereby win but hatred, not the grace that might have been. Exit Apollo. Talk on, talk on, thy threat shall win no bride from me, this woman whatsoe'er be tied, shall lie in Hades' house, even at the word I go to lay upon her hair my sword. For all whose head this grey sword visiteth, to death are hallowed, and the lords of death. Thanatos goes into the house. Presently, as the day grows lighter, the chorus enters. It consists of citizens of Fury, who speak severally. Quiet, quiet above, beneath. The house of Admetus holds its breath. And never a king's friend near to tell us either of tears to shed for Peleus's daughter, crowned and dead, or joy that her eyes are clear. Bravest, truest of wives is she that I have seen or the world shall see. Hear ye no sob, or noise of hands beating the breast, no mourner's cries for one they cannot save. Nothing, and at the door there stands no handmaid. Help, O Pion, rise, O star beyond the wave. Dead, and this quiet? No, it cannot be. Dead, dead not gone to burial secretly why i still fear what makes your speech so brave admetus cast that dear wife to the grave alone with none to see i see no bowl of clear spring water it ever stands before the dread door when a dead man rests no lock of shorn hair every daughter of woman sheds it for the dead no sound of bruised beasts Yet tis this very day. This very day? The queen should pass and lie beneath the clay. It hurts my life, my heart. All honest hearts must sorrow for a brightness that departs, a good life worn away. To wander o'er leagues of land, to search over wastes of sea, where the prophets of Lycia stand, or where Ammon's daughters three make runes in the rainless sand, for magic to make her free. Oh, vain! For the end is here. Sudden it comes and sheer. What lamb on the altar strand, stricken, shall comfort me? Only, only one I know. Apollo's son was he, who healed men long ago. Were he but on earth to see, she would rise from the dark below and the gates of eternity. For men whom the gods had slain he pitied and raised again, till God's fire laid him low. And now what help have we? All's done that can be. Every, every vow full paid and every, every altar's brow full crowned, crowned with, with spice of sacrifice. sacrifice. No, no help, help remains nor, nor respite, respite now. now enter from the castle a handmaid almost in tears but see a handmaid cometh and the tear wet on her cheek what tidings shall we hear thy grief is natural daughter if some ill hath fallen to-day say is she living still or dead your mistress speak if speak you may alive no dead oh read it either way nay daughter can the same soul live and die her life is broken death is in her eye poor king to think what she was and what thou he never knew her worth 
he will know it now there is no hope methinks to save her still the hour is come and breaks all human will she hath such tendance as the dying crave for sure and rich robes ready for her grave for god she dies high-hearted ay and far in honour raised above all wives that are far above all how other what must she who seeketh to surpass this woman be or how could any wife more shining make her lord's love than by dying for his sake but thus much all the city knows tis here in her own rooms the tale will touch thine ear with strangeness when she knew the day was come she rose and washed her body white as foam with running water then the cedarn press she opened and took forth her funeral dress and rich adornment so she stood arrayed before the hearth-fire of her home and prayed mother since i must vanish from the day this last last time i kneel to thee and pray be mother to my two children find some dear helpmate for him some gentle lord for her and let not them like me before their hour die let them live in happiness in our old home till life be full and age content to every household altar then she went and made for each his garland of the green boughs of the wind-blown myrtle and was seen praying without a sob without a tear she knew the dread thing coming but her clear cheek never changed till suddenly she fled back to her own chamber and bridal bed then came the tears and she spoke all her thought o oh bed whereon my laughing girlhood's knot was severed by this man for whom i die farewell tis thou i speak not bitterly tis thou hast slain me all alone i go lest i be false to him or thee and lo some woman shall lie here instead of me happier perhaps more true she cannot be she kissed the pillow as she knelt and wet with flooding tears was that fair coverlet at last she had had her fill of weeping then she tore herself away and rose again walking with downcast eyes yet turned before she had left the room and cast her down once more kneeling beside the bed then to her side the children came and clung to her and cried and her arms hugged them and a long good-bye she gave to each like one who goes to die the whole house then was weeping every slave in sorrow for his mistress and she gave her hand to all ay none so base was there she gave him not good words and he to her so on admetus falls from either side sorrow twere bitter grief to him to have died himself and being escaped how sore a woe he hath earned instead ah some day he shall know surely admetus suffers even to-day for this true-hearted love he hath cast away he weeps begs her not leave him desolate and holds her to his heart too late too late she is sinking now and there beneath his eye fading the poor cold hand falls languidly and faint is all her breath yet still she fain would look once on the sunlight once again and never more i will go in and tell thy presence few there be will serve so well my master and stand by him to the end but thou hast been from olden days our friend the maid goes in o oh, zeus what escape and where from the evil thing how break the snare that is round our king ah list one cometh no let us no more wait make dark our raiment and shear this hair ay friends tis so even so yet the gods are great and may send a layment to prayer to prayer o, o pian wise some healing of, of this home devise devise, devise. find find o oh, long ago when we were blind thine eyes saw mercy find some healing breath again o pian break the chains that bind stay the red hand of death alas what shame what dread thou fairy son shalt be harvested when thy wife is gone ah me for a deed less drear than this thou ruest men have died for sorrow 
ay hearts have bled tis she not as man say dear but the dearest truest shall lie ere morrow before thee dead but lo once, once more she and, and her, her husband, husband moving to, to the, the door, door cry cry and thou o land, land of fairy hearken the bravest of women sinketh perisheth under the green earth down where the shadows darken down to the house of death during the last words admetus and alcestis have entered alcestis is supported by her handmaids and followed by her two children and who hath said that love shall bring more joy to man than fear and strife i knew his perils from of old i know them now when i behold the bitter faring of my king whose love is taken and his life left evermore an empty thing o sun o light of the day that falls o running cloud that races along the sky they look on thee and me a stricken twain who have wrought no sin that god should have thee slain dear earth and house of sheltering walls and wedded homes of the land where my fathers lie fail not my hapless one be strong and pray the o'ermastering gods to hate us not our way alcestis faintly her mind wandering a boat too oared upon water i see i see and the ferryman of the dead his hand that hangs on the pole his voice that cries thou lingerest come come quickly we wait for thee he is angry that i am slow he shakes his head alas a bitter boat faring for me my bride ill-starred oh this is misery drawing drawing tis somewhat that draweth me to the palaces of the dead oh so dark the wings the eyebrows and oh the eyes go back god's mercy what seekest thou let me be where am i oh and what paths are these i tread grievous for all who love thee but for me and my two babes most hard most solitary hold me not let me lie i am too weak to stand and death is near and a slow darkness stealing on my sight my little ones good-bye soon soon and mother will be here no more good-bye two happy children in the light o oh, word of pain o oh, sharper ache than any death of mine had brought for the god's sake desert me not for thine own desolate children's sake nay up be brave for if they rend thee from me i can draw no breath in thy hand are my life and death thine my beloved and my friend admetus seeing what way my fortunes lie i fain would speak with thee before i die i have set thee before all things yea mine own life beside thine was not for this alone i die dear lord i need never have died i might have lived to wed some prince of pride dwell in a king's house nay how could i torn from thee live on i and my babes forlorn i have given to thee my youth not more nor less but all though i was full of happiness thy father and mother both tis strange to tell have failed thee though for them the deed was well the years were ripe to die and save their son the one child of the house for hope was none if thou shouldst pass away of other heirs so thou and i had lived through the long years both thou hadst not lain sobbing here alone for a dead wife and orphan babes 
is done now. And some God hath wrought out all his will. Howbeit I now will ask thee to fulfil one great return gift. Not so great with all as I have given, for life is more than all. But just and due, as thine own heart will tell. For thou hast loved our little ones as well as I have. Keep them to be masters here in my old house, and bring no stepmother upon them. She might hate them. She might be some baser woman, not a queen like me, and strike them with her hand. Oh, for mercy, spare our little ones that wrong. It is my prayer. They come into a house. They are all strife and hate to any child of the dead wife. Better a serpent than a stepmother. A boy is safe. He has his father there to guard him. But a little girl— Taking the little girl to her. What good and gentle care will guide thy maidenhood? What woman wilt thou find at father's side? One evil word from her, just when the tide of youth is full, would wreck thy hope of love, and no more mother near to stand above thy marriage-bed, nor comfort thee pain-tossed in travail when one needs a mother most. Seeing I must die, tis here, across my way, not for the morrow, not for the third day, but now. Death! and to lie with things that were. Farewell. God keep you happy. Husband dear, remember that I failed thee not. And you, my children, that your mother loved you true. Take comfort. Ere thy lord can speak, I swear, if truth is in him, he will grant thy prayer. He will, he will! Oh, never fear for me. Mine hast thou been, and mine shalt ever be, living and dead, thou only. Nothing in wide Hellas but thou shalt be Amidas's bride. No race so high, no face so magic sweet shall ever from this purpose turn my feet. And children, if God grant me joy of these, tis all I ask, of thee no joy nor ease he gave me. And thy mourning I will bear, not one year of my life, but every year, while life shall last. My mother I will know no more, my father shall be held my foe. They brought the words of love, but not the deed, whilst thou hast given thine all, and in my need saved me. What can I do but weep alone, alone all way, when such a wife is gone? An end shall be made of revel, and an end of crowns and song and mirth of friend with friend, wherewith my house was glad. I ne'er again will touch the lute, nor ease my heart from pain with pipes of Afric. All the joys I knew, and joys were many, thou hast broken in two. Oh, I will find some artist wondrous wise, should mould from me thy shape, thine hair, thine eyes, and lay it in thy bed, and I will lie close, and reach out mine arms to thee, and cry thy name into the night, and wait, and hear my own heart breathe. Thy love, thy love is near. O oh, cold delight, yet it might ease the sum of sorrow, and good dreams of thee will come like balm. Tis sweet, even in a dream, to gaze on a dear face the moment that it stays. O oh God, if Orpheus's voice were mine, to sing to death's high virgin and the virgin's king, till their hearts fail them, down would I my path cleave, and not stay me, not the hound of wrath, not the grey oarsman of the ghostly tide, till back to sunlight I had borne my bride. But now, wife, wait for me, till I shall come where thou art, and prepare our second home, these ministers in that same cedar suite where thou art lain will lay me feet to feet and head to head. Oh, not in death from thee divided, who alone are true to me. This lifelong sorrow thou hast sworn I too. Thy friend will bear with thee. It is her due. 
children. Ye heard his promise. He will wed no other woman, nor forget the dead. Again I promise, so it shall be done. Alcestis, giving the children into his arms, one after the other. On that oath take my daughter, and my son. Dear hand that gives, I accept both gift and vow. Thou in my place must be their mother now. Else were they motherless, I needs must try. My babes, I ought to live, and lo, I die. And how can I, forlorn of thee, live on? Time healeth, and the dead are dead and gone. O oh, take me with thee to the dark below, me also. Tis enough that one should go. O oh, fate, to have cheated me of one so true. Alcestis, her strength failing. There comes a darkness, a great burden too. I am lost if thou wilt leave me, wife, mine own. I am not thy wife. I am nothing. All is gone. Thy babes, thou wilt not leave them. Raise thine eye. I am sorry. But good-bye, children, good-bye. Look at them, wake and look at them. I must go. What? Dying? Farewell, husband. She dies. Ah! Oh, woe! Woe! Admetus' queen is dead. While Admetus is weeping silently, and the chorus veil their faces, the little boy runs up to his dead mother. Oh, what has happened? Mommy has gone away, left me, and will not come back any more. Father, I shall be lonely all the day. Look, look, her eyes, and her arms not like before. How they lie. Mother, oh, speak a word. Answer me, answer me, mother. It is I. I am touching your face. It is I, your little bird. Admetus, recovering himself and going to the child. She hears us not. She sees us not. We lie under a heavy grief, child, thou and I. I am so little, father, and lonely and cold, here without mother. It is too hard, and you, poor little sister, too. Oh, father, such a little time we had her. She might have stayed on till we all were old. Everything is spoiled when mother is dead. The little boy is taken away with his sister sobbing my king thou needs must gird thee to the worst thou shalt not be the last nor yet the first to lose a noble wife be brave and know to die is but a debt that all men owe i know it came not without doubts and fears this thing the thought hath poisoned all my years albeit I now will make the burial due to this dead queen. Be assembled, all of you, and after, raise your triumph song to greet this pitiless power that yawns beneath our feet. Meantime, let all in Thessaly who dread my scepter join in mourning for the dead, with temple sorrow shorn and sable weed. Ye chariot lords, ye spurs of the steed, shear close your horses' manes. Let there be found through all my realm no lute, no lyre, nor sound of piping, till twelve moons are at an end. For never shall I lose a closer friend, nor braver in my need. And worthy is she of honor, who alone hath died for me. The body of Alcestis is carried into the house by mourners. Admetus follows it. Daughter of Peleus, fare thee well. May joy be thine in the sunless houses. For thine is a deed which the dead shall tell, Where a king black-browed in the gloom carouses, And the cold grey hand at the helm and oar, Which guideth shadows from shore to shore, Shall bear this day, or the tears that well, A queen of women, a spouse of spouses. Minstrels many shall praise thy name, with lyre full strung and with voices lyreless, when mid moon riseth an orbit flame, and from dusk to dawning the dance is tireless. 
and Carnos cometh to Sparta's call, and Athens shineth in festival, for thy death is a song and a fullness of fame, till the heart of the singer is left desireless. Would I could reach thee, oh, reach thee and save my daughter, starward in gulfs of hell, past gates, past tears that swell, where the weak oar climbs through the night and the water. Beloved and lonely one, who feared not dying, gone in another's stead, alone to the hungry dead, light be the carven stone above thee lying. O, oh, he who shall seek again a new bride after thee, were loathed of thy children twain, and loathed of me. Word to his mother sped, praying to her who bore him, Word to his father old, heavy with years and cold, Quick, ere your son be dead, what dare ye for him? Old, and they dared not, grey, and they helped him never. T'was she in her youth and pride rose up for her lord and died. O oh, love of two hearts that stay one knit for ever! Tis rare in the world. God send such bride in my house to be. She should live life to the end, not fail through me. As the song ceases, there enters a stranger, walking strongly, but travel-stained, dusty, and tired. His lion-skin and club show him to be Heracles. Ho, countryman! And is Admetus in his home? Our king is in his house, Lord Heracles. But say, what need brings thee in days like these to Thessaly and fairies wallet ring? A quest I follow for the Argive king. What prize doth call thee, and to what far place? The horses of one Diomede in Thrace. But how? Thou knowest not. Is he strange to thee? Quite strange, I ne'er set foot in Bistany. Not without battle shalt thou win those steeds. So be it, I cannot fail my master's needs. To slay or die, win or return no more. Well, I have looked on peril's face before. What profit hast thou in such manslaying? I shall bring back the horses to my king. T'were none such easy work to bridle them. Not easy. Have they nostrils breathing flame? They tear men's flesh. Their jaws are swift with blood. Men's flesh, tis mountain wolves, not horses' food. Thou wilt see their mangers clotted with blood, like mire. And he who feeds such beasts, who was his sire? Ares, the warlord of the golden targe. Enough! This labour fitteth well my large fortune, still upward, still against the wind. How often with these kings of Ares' kind must I do battle, first the dark wolf-man, Lycaon, then twas the man called the swan, and now this man of steeds. Well, none shall see Alcmena's son turn from his enemy. Enter Admetus from the castle. Lo, as we speak, this land's high governor, Admetus, cometh from his castle door. Zeus born of Perseid line, all joy to thee. Joy to Admetus, lord of Thessaly. Right welcome were she, but thy love I know. But why this mourning hair, this garb of woe? There is a burial I must make to-day. God keep all evil from thy children. Nay, my children live. Thy father, if tis he, is ripe in years. He liveth, friend, and she who bore me. Surely not thy wife. Tis not Alcestis. Ah, uh, two answers share my thought, question to her. Is she alive or dead? She is, and is not, and my heart hath bled long years for her. I understand no more. Thy words are riddles. Heardst thou not of yore this doom that she must meet? I know thy wife has sworn to die for thee. And is it life to live with such an oath hung o'er her head? Ah, weep not too soon, friend. Wait till she be dead. He dies who is doomed to die. He is dead who dies. The two are different things in most men's eyes. Decide thy way, lord, and let me decide the other way. Who is it that has died? Thou weepest. Tis a woman. It doth take my memory back to her, of whom we spake. A stranger, or of kin to thee? Not kin, but much beloved. How came she to be in thy house to die? 
her father died, and so she came to us, an orphan, long ago. Tis sad. I would I had found thee on a happier day. Thy words have some intent. What wouldst thou say? I must find harbour with some other friend. My prince, it shall not be. God never sends such evil. Tis great turmoil when a guest comes to a morning house. Come in and rest. Let the dead die. I cannot for mere shame feast beside men whose eyes have tears in them. The guest rooms are apart where thou shalt be. Friend, let me go. I shall go gratefully. Thou shalt not enter any door but mine. To an attendant. Lead in our guest. Unlock the furthest line of guest chambers, and bid the stewards there make ready a full feast. Then close with care the midway doors. Tis unmeet if he hears our turmoil, or is burdened with our tears. The attendant leads Heracles into the house. How, master, when within a thing so sad lies, thou wilt house a stranger? Art thou mad? And had I turned the stranger from my door, who sought my shelter? Hadst thou praised me more? I trow not, if my sorrow were thereby no whit less, only the more friendless I. And more, when bards tell tales, were it not worse my house should lie beneath the stranger's curse? Now he is my sure friend, if e'er I stand lonely in Argos in a thirsty land. Thou callest him thy friend. How didst thou dare keep hid from him the burden of thy care? He would never have entered, had he known my grief. Ay, men may mock what I have done and call me fool. My house has never learned to fail its friend, nor seen the stranger's burn. Admetus goes into the house. Oh, a, a house, house that, that loves, loves the, stranger, the stranger, and a house forever free. free. And Apollo, the song-changer, was a herdsman in thy fee. Yea, a piping he was found, where the upward valleys wound, To the kine from out the manger, and the sheep from off the lea, And love was upon Othrys at the sound. And from deep glens unbeholden, of the forest to his song, There came lynxes, streaky golden, there came lions in a throng, Tawny-coated, ruddy-eyed, to that piper in his pride, and shy fawns he would embolden, dappled dancers, out along the shadow, by the pine tree's side. And those magic pipes a blowing have fulfilled thee in thy reign, by thy lake with honey flowing, by thy sheepfolds and thy grain, where the sun turns his steeds to the twilight, all the meads of Molossus know thy sowing, and thy ploughs upon the plain. Yea, and eastward thou art free to the portals of the sea, And Pelion the unharboured is but minister to thee. He hath opened wide his dwelling to the stranger, Though his roof for the dead was fresh and welling, For the loved ones of his youth. Tis the brave heart's cry, I will fail not though I die. Doth it win with no man's telling? some high vision of the truth we, we may marvel yet i trust, trust when man seeketh to be just and to pity them, them that wander god will raise him, him from the dust end of part one part two of alcestis by euripides Translated by Gilbert Murray. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. As the song ceases, the doors are thrown open, and Admetus comes before them. A great funeral procession is seen moving out. Most gentle citizens, our dead is here made ready and these used to bear the bier uplifted to the grave mound and the urn now seeing she goes forth never to return bid her your last farewell as mourners may the procession moves forward past him nay lord thy father walking old and gray and followers bearing burial gifts and brave gods 
which men call the comforts of the grave enter furies with followers bearing robes and gifts i come in sorrow for thy sorrow son a faithful wife indeed thou hast lost and one who ruled her heart but how so hard they be we needs must bear these griefs some gifts for thee are here yes take them let them go beneath the sod we both must honour her in death seeing she hath died my son that thou mayest live nor i be childless ay she would not give my soul to a sad old age mourning for thee methinks she hath made all women's life to be a nobler thing by one great woman's deed thou saviour of my son thou staff in need to our wrecked age farewell may some good life be thine still in the grave ah oh, tis a wife like this man needs else let him stay unwed the old man has not noticed admetus's gathering indignation i called not thee to burial of my dead nor count thy presence here a welcome thing my wife shall wear no robe that thou canst bring nor needs thy help in aught there was a day we craved thy love when i was on my way deathward thy love which bade thee stand aside and watch grey-bearded while a young man died and now wilt mourn for her thy fatherhood thou wast no true begetter of my blood nor she my mother who dares call me child oh she was barren ever she beguiled thy folly with some bastard of a thrall here is my proof this hour hath shown me all thou art and now i am no more thy son for god among all cowards can scarce be one like thee so gray so near the boundary of mortal life thou wouldst not durst not die to save thy son thou hast suffered her to do thine office her no kin to me nor you yet more than kin henceforth she hath all the part of mother yea and father in my heart and what a glory had been thine that day dying to save thy son when either way thy time must needs be brief thy life has had abundances of the things that make men glad a crown that came to thee in youth a son to do thee worship and maintain thy throne not like a childless king whose folk and lands lie helpless to be torn by strangers hands wilt say i failed in duty to thine age for that thou hast let me die not so most sage most pious i was to mother and to thee and thus ye have paid me well i counsel ye lose no more time get quick another son to foster thy last years to lay thee on the bier when dead and wrap thee in thy pall i will not bury thee i am for all the care that thou hast shown me dead if i have found another true to save me at the bound of life and death that other's child am i that other's fostering friend until i die how falsely do these old men pray for death cursing their weight of years their weary breath when death comes close there is not one that dares to die age is forgot and all its cares o oh, peace enough of sorrow in our path is strewn thou son stir not thy father's wrath my son whom seekest thou some lydian thrall or phrygian bought with cash to affright withal by cursing i am a thessalian free my father a born chief of thessaly and thou most insolent yet think not so to fling thy loud lewd words at me and go i got thee to succeed me in my hall i have fed thee clad thee but i have no call to die for thee not in our family not in all greece doth law bid fathers die to save their sons thy road of life is thine none others to rejoice at or repine all that was owed to thee by us is paid my throne is thine my broad lands shall be made thine as i had them from my father say how have i wronged thee what have i kept away not died for thee i ask not thee to die thou lovest this light shall i not love it i 
tis age on age there in the dark and here my sunlit time is short but dear but dear thou hast fought hard enough thou drawest breath even now long past thy portioned hour of death by murdering her and blamest my faint heart coward who has let a woman play thy part and die to save her pretty soldier ay a good plan surely thou needst never die thou canst find alway somewhere some fond wife to die for thee but prithee make not strife with other friends who will not save thee so be silent loving thine own life and know all men love theirs taunt others and thou too shalt hear much that is bitter and is true too much of wrath before too much hath run after old man cease to revile thy son speak on i have spoken if my truth of tongue gives pain to thee why didst thou do me wrong wrong to have died for thee were far more wrong how can an old life weigh against a young man hath but one not two lives to his use oh live on live and grow more old than zeus because none wrongs thee thou must curse thy sire i bless him is not life his one desire this dead methinks is lying in thy place a proof old traitor of thy cowardliness died she through me that thou wilt hardly say o oh god mayst thou but feel the need of me some day go forward woo more wives that more may die as thou wouldst not thine is the infamy this light of heaven is sweet and sweet again thou heart is foul a thing unmeet for men thou laughst not yet across the old man's tomb dishonoured shall thou die when death shall come once dead i shall not care what tales are told great gods so lost to honour and so old she was not lost to honour she was blind go leave me with my dead out from my mind i go bury the woman thou hast slain her kinsman may yet come to thee with plain question acastus hath small place in good men if he care not for his sister's blood Theres goes off with his attendants admetus calls after him as he goes be gone be gone thou and thy bitter mate be old and childless ye have earned your fate while your son lives for never shall ye be from henceforth under the same roof with me must i send heralds in a trumpet's call to abjure thy blood fear not i will send them all Pheres is now out of sight admetus drops his defiance and seems like a broken man but we our sorrow is upon us come with me and let us bear her to the tomb ah me farewell, farewell unfalteringly brave farewell thou generous heart and true may pluto give thee welcome due and hermes love thee in the grave what air of blessed life there be for high souls to the darkness flown be thine for ever and a throne beside the crowned persephone the funeral procession has formed and moves slowly out followed by admetus and the chorus the stage is left empty till a side door of the castle opens and there comes out a servant angry and almost in tears full many a stranger and from many a land hath lodged in this castle and my hand served them but never has there passed this way a scurvier ruffian than our guest to-day he saw my master's grief but all the more in he must come and shoulders through the door and after think you he would mannerly take what was said before him no not he if on this day of trouble we left out some small thing he must have it with a shout up in both hands our wart of ivy wood he raised and drank the dark grapes burning blood strong and untempered till the fire was red within him then put the myrtle round his head 
and rode some noisy song so had we there discordant music he without a care for all this affliction of admitus halls sang on and listening one could hear the thralls in the long gallery weeping for the dead we let him see no tears our master made that order that the stranger must know so here i wait in her own house and do service to some black thief some men of prey and she has gone has gone for ever away i never followed her nor lifted high my hand to bless her never said good-bye i loved her like my mother so did all the slaves she never let his anger fall too hard she shaved us alway and this wild beast comes in our sorrow when we need him least during the last few lines heracles has entered unperceived by the servant he has evidently bathed and changed his garments and drunk his fill and is now reveling a garland of flowers on his head he frightens the servant a little from time to time during the following speech friend why so solemn and so cranky-eyed tis not a henchman's office to show pride to his betters he should smile and make good cheer there comes a guest thy lord's old comrade here and thou art all knitted eyebrows, scowls, and head bent because somebody forsooth is dead. Come close, I mean to make thee wiser. The servant reluctantly comes close. So, dost comprehend things mortal, how they grow? I suppose not, how could he? Look this way. Death is a debt all mortal men must pay. Ay, there is no man living who can say if life will last him yet a single day on to the dark drives fortune and no force can rest her secret nor put back her course i have told thee now i have taught thee after this eat drink make thyself merry count the bliss of the one passing hour thine own the rest is fortunes and give honour chiefliest to our lady cypris giver of all joys to man oh, tis a sweet goddess otherwise let all these questions sleep and just obey my counsel thou believest all i say i hope so let this stupid grieving be rise up above thy troubles and with me drink in a cloud of blossoms by my soul i vow the sweet plash music of the bowl will break thy glumness loose thee from the frown within let mortal man keep to his own mortality and not expect too much to all your solemn dogs and other such scowlers i tell thee truth no more nor less life is not life but just unhappiness he offers the wine bowl to the servant who avoids it we know all this but now our fortunes be not such as ask for mirth or revelry a woman dead of no one's kin why grieve so much thy master and thy mistress live live man has to heard nothing of our woe yes thy lord told me all i need to know he is too kind to his guests more kind than wise must i go starved because some stranger dies some stranger yes a stranger verily is this some real grief he hath hid from me go drink man leave us to our master's woes it sounds not like a stranger yet god knows how should thy revelling hurt if that were all hath mine own friend so wronged me in his hall thou camest at an hour when none was free to accept thee we were mourning thou canst see our hair black robes who is it that is dead alcestis the king's wife what hast thou said alcestis and ye feasted me withal he held it shame to turn thee from his hall shame and when such a wondrous wife was gone oh all has gone all lost not she alone i knew i felt it when i saw his tears and face and shorn hair but he won mine ears with talk of the strange woman and her right of burial so in mine own heart's despite i crossed his threshold and sat drinking he and i old friends in his calamity drank and 
sang songs and reveled my head hot with wine and flowers and thou to tell me not when all the house lay filled with sorrow thou where lies the tomb where shall i find her now close by the straight lad is a road the tall white marble showed from the castle wall o oh, heart o oh, hand great doings have ye done of old up now and show them what a son took life that hour when she of tyrant's sod electron's daughter mingled with her god i needs must save this woman from the shore of death and set her in her house once more repaying admetus love this death this black and winged lord of corpses i will track home i shall surely find him by the grave a hungered lapping the hot blood they gave in sacrifice and ambush then one spring one grip these arms shall be a brazen ring with no escape no rest howe'er he whine and curse his mauled ribs till the queen is mine or if he escape me if he come not there to seek the blood of offering i will fare down to the houses without light and bring to her we name not and her nameless king strong prayers until they yield to me and send alcestis home to life and to my friend who gave me shelter drove me not away in his great grief but hid his evil day like a brave man because he loved me well is one in all this land more hospitable one in all greece i swear no man shall say he hath cast his love upon a churl away he goes forth just as he is in the direction of the grave the servant watches a moment and goes back into the hall the stage is empty then admetus and the chorus return alas bitter the homeward way bitter to seek a widowed house ah me where should i fly or stay be dumb or speak would i could cease to be despair despair my mother bore me under an evil star i envy them that are perished my heart is there it dwells in the sunless houses afar afar i take no joy in looking upon the light no joy in the feel of the earth beneath my tread the slayer hath taken his hostage the lord of the dead holdeth me sworn to taste no more delight he throws himself on the ground in despair each member of the chorus speaks his line severally as he passes admetus who is heard sobbing at the end of each line advance advance till the house shall give thee cover thou hast borne heavy things and meet for lamentation thou hast passed hast passed through the deepest of the river yet no help comes to the sad and silent nation and the face of thy beloved it shall meet thee never never ye wrench by wounds asunder where is grief like mine whose wife is dead my wife whom would i ne'er had wed nor loved nor held my house with her blessed are they who dare to dwell unloved a woman tis but one heart that they bleed with and alone can bear their one life's burden well no young shall wither at their side no bridal room be swept by death ay better man should draw his breath for ever without child or bride tis fate tis, tis fate. fate she, she is, strong, is strong and none, none shall, shall break, break her no end no end wilt thou lay to lamentations endure and be still thy lamenting will not wake her there be many before thee who had suffered and had patience though the face of sorrow changeth yet her hand is on all nations the garb of tears the mourners cry then the long ache when tears are past oh why didst hinder me to cast this body to the dust and die with her the faithful and the brave then not one lonely soul had fled but two great lovers proudly dead through the deep waters of the grave a friend i knew in whose house died a son worthy of bitter rue his only one his head sank yet he bare stilly his weight of care though grey was in his hair and life nigh done 
ye shapes that front me wall and gate how shall i enter in and dwell among ye with all fortune's spell dischanted i the change is great that day i strode with bridal song through lifted brands of pelican pine a hand beloved lay in mine and loud behind a reveling throng exalted me and her the dead they called us young high-hearted told how princes were our sires of old and how we loved and we must wed for those high songs lo men that moan and raiment black where once was white who guide me homeward in the night on that waste bed to lie alone it breaks like strife thy long peace where no pain had entered yet is life sweet life not slain a wife dead a dear chair empty is that so rare men live without despair whose loves are tain behold i count my wife's fate happier though all gainsay me than mine own to her comes no more pain for ever she hath rest and peace from all toil and her name is blessed but i am one who hath no right to stay alive on earth one that hath lost his way in fate and strays in dreams of life long past friends I have learned my lesson at the last. I have my life. Here stands my house. But now, how dare I enter in? Or, entered, how go forth again? Go forth when none is there to give me a parting word, and I to her. Where shall I turn for refuge? There within? The desert that remains where she hath been will drive me forth. The bed, the empty seat she sat in, nay, the floor beneath my feet unswept, the children crying at my knee for mother, and the very thralls will be in sobs for the dear mistress that is lost. That is my home. If I go forth, a host of feasts and bridal dances, gatherings gay of women, will be there to fright me away to loneliness. Mine eyes will never bear the sight. They were her friends, they played with her and always always men who hate my name will murmur this is he who lives in shame because he dared not die he gave instead the woman whom he loved and so is fled from death he counts himself a man withal and seeing his parents died not at his call he hates them when he himself he dared not die such mocking beside all my pain shall i endure what profit was it to live on, friend, with my grief kept and mine honour gone? I have, I have sojourned, sojourned in, the in the muses' land, have wandered with, with the wandering star, seeking for strength, and in my hand held all philosophies that are. Yet nothing could I hear nor see stronger than that which needs must be no orphic rune no thracian scroll hath magic to avert the morrow no healing all those medicines brave apollo to the asclepiad gave pale herbs of comfort in the bowl of man's wide sorrow she hath no temple she alone nor image where a man may kneel no blood upon her altar stone crying shall make her hear nor feel i know thy greatness come not great beyond my dreams o power of fate ay zeus himself shall not unclose his purpose save by thy discerning the chain of iron the scythian sword it yields and shivers at thy word thy heart is as the rock and knows no ruth nor turning they turn to admetus her hand hath caught thee yea the keeping of iron fingers grip thee round be still be still thy noise of weeping shall raise no lost one from the ground nay even the sons of god are parted at last from joy and pine in death o oh, dear on earth when all did love her o oh, dear lost beyond recover of women all the bravest hearted hath pressed thy lips and breathed thy breath 
let not the earth that lies upon her be deemed a grave mound of the dead let honour as the gods have honour be hers till men shall bow the head and strangers climbing up from the city her slanting path shall muse and say this woman died to save her lover and liveth blessed the stars above her hail holy one and grant thy pity so passed the wondering words away but see it is alcimia's son once more my lord king cometh striding to thy door enter heracles his dress is as in the last scene but shows signs of a struggle behind come two attendants guiding between them a veiled woman who seems like one asleep or unconscious the woman remains in the background while heracles comes forward thou art my friend admetus therefore bold and plain i tell my story and withhold no secret hurt was i not worthy friend to stand beside thee yea and to the end be proven in sorrow if i was true to thee and thou didst tell me not a word while she lay dead within but bid me feast as though naught but the draping of some stranger's woe was on thee so i garlanded my brow and poured the god's drink offering and but now filled thy death-stricken house with wine and song thou hast done me wrong my brother a great wrong thou hast done me but i will not add more pain in thine affliction why i am here again returning thou must hear i pray thee take and keep yon woman from me till i make my homeward way from thrace when i have tamed those four steeds and their bloody master slain and if which heaven avert i ne'er should see hellas again i leave her here to be an handmaid in thy house no labour small was it that brought her to my hand at all i fell upon a contest certain kings had set for all mankind sore buffetings and meat for strong men where i staked my life and won this woman for the easier strife black steeds were prizes herds of kine were cast for heavier issues fists and wrestling last this woman lest my work should all seem done for naught i needs must keep what i have won so prithee take her in no theft but true toil won her some day thou mayst thank me too twas in no scorn no bitterness to thee i hid my wife's death and my misery methought it was but added pain on pain if thou shouldst leave me and roam again forth seeking another's roof and for my own sorrow i was content to weep alone but for this damsel if it may be so i pray thee lord let some man not in woe like mine take her thou hast in thessaly abundant friends twould wake sad thoughts in me how could i have this damsel in my sight and keep mine eyes dry prince why wilt thou smite the smitten griefs enough are on my head where in my castle could so young a maid be lodged her veil and raiment show her young here in the man's hall i should fear some wrong tis not so easy prince to keep controlled my young men and thy charge i fain would hold sacred if not wouldst have me keep her in the woman's chambers where my dead hath been how could i lay this woman where my bride once lay it were dishonour double died these streets would curse the man who so betrayed the wife who saved him for some younger maid the dead itself i needs must worship her and keep her will during the last few lines admetus has been looking at the veiled woman and though he does not consciously recognize her feels a strange emotion overmastering him he draws back ay i must walk with care o woman whosoever thou art thou hast the shape of my alcestis thou art cast in mould like hers o oh, take her from mine eyes in god's name heracles signs to the attendants to take alcestis away again she stays veiled and unnoticing in the background i was fallen and in this wise thou wilt make me deeper fall meseems meseems there in her face the loved one of my dreams looked forth 
my heart is made a turbid thing, craving I know not what, and my tears spring unbidden. Grief I knew twould be, but I'll fire a grief I never knew till now. Thy fate I praise not, yet what gifts so e'er God giveth, man must steal himself and bear. Heracles, drawing Admetus on. Would God I had the power, mid all this might of arm, to break the dungeons of the night, and free thy wife, and make thee glad again. Where is such power? I know thy heart were fain, but so tis writ, the dead shall never rise. Chafe not the curb, then, suffer, and be wise. Easier to give such counsel than to keep. Who will be happier, shouldst thou always weep? Why, none. Yet some blind longing draws me on. Tis natural thou didst love her that is gone. Tis that hath wrecked, O oh, more than wrecked, my life. Tis certain thou hast lost a faithful wife. Till life itself is dead, and wearies me. The pain is yet young, time will soften thee. The veiled woman begins dimly, as though in a dream, to hear the words spoken. Time? Yes, if time be death. Nay, wait and some woman some new desire of love will come peace how canst thou shame on thee thou wilt stay unwed for ever lonely day and night no other bride in these void arms shall lie what profit will thy dead wife gain thereby honour which finds her wheresoe'er she lies most honourable in thee but scarcely wise god curse me if i betray her in her tomb ah so be it and this good damsel thou wilt take her home no in the name of zeus thy father no i swear tis not well to reject her so twould tear my heart to accept her grant me friend this one boon it may help thee in the end woe's me would god thou hast never won those victories thou sharest both the victory and the prize thou art generous but now let her go oh, she shall if go she must Look first, and judge withal. He takes the veil off Alcestis. She must, and thou. Forgive me. Friend, there is a secret reason why I pray for this. I grant thy boon, then, though it likes me ill. Twill like thee later. Now, but do my will. Take her. Find her some lodging in my hall. I will not yield this maid to any thrall. Take her thyself, and lead her in. I stand beside her. Take her. Lead her to thy hand. He brings the woman close to Admetus, who looks determinedly away. She reaches out her arms. I touch her not. Let her go in. I am loath to trust her save to thy pledged hand and oath. Lord, this is violence. Wrong. Reach forth thy hand and touch this comer from a distant land. Admetus, holding out his hand without looking like perseus when he touched the gorgon there thou hast touched her admetus at last taking her hand touched her yes heracles a hand on the shoulder of each then cling to her and say if thou hast found a guest of grace in god's son heracles look in her face look is she like admetus looks and stands amazed oh ye gods what meaneth this a marvel beyond dreams the face tis she mine verily mine what doth god mock at me and blast my vision with some mad surmise not so this is thy wife before thine eyes beware the dead have phantoms that they send nay no ghost raiser hast thou made thy friend my wife she whom i buried i deceive thee not nor wonder thou canst scarce believe and dare I touch her, greet her, as mine own wife living? Greet her, thy desire is one. Admetus, approaching with awe. Beloved eyes, beloved form, O oh, thou gone beyond hope, I have thee, I hold thee now. Thou hast her, may no god begrudge your joy. Admetus, turning to Heracles. O oh, lordly conqueror, child of Zeus on high, be blessed and may he thy sire above save thee as thou alone hast saved my love he kneels to heracles who raises him but how how didst thou win her to the light i fought for life with him i needs must fight with death thou hast fought but where 
among his dead i lay and sprang and gripped him as he fled admetus in an odd whisper looking toward alcestis why standeth she so still no sound no word she hath dwelt with death her voice may not be heard ere to the lords of them below she pay due cleansing and awake on the third day to the attendants so guide her home they lead alcestis to the doorway and thou king for the rest of time be true be righteous to thy guest as he would have thee be but now farewell my task yet lies before me and the spell that binds me to my master forth i fare stay with us this one day stay but to share the feast upon our hearth the feasting day shall surely come now i must needs away heracles departs farewell all victory attend thy name and safe homecoming lo i make proclaim to the four nations and all thessaly a wondrous happiness hath come to be therefore pray dance give offerings and make full your altars in the life-blood of the bull for me my heart is changed my life shall mend henceforth for surely fortune is a friend he goes with alcestis into the house there be many shapes of mystery and many things god brings to be past hope or fear and the end men looked for come not and a path is there where no man thought so hath it fallen here end of part two end of alcestis by euripides translated by gilbert murray